Good morning. This is fun and new to be on video. Um, I, I want to share a story with you uh, that happened in 2017. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of history um, first. Oh, my goodness. So my daughter had put together a Bible study where she invited her friends over, and I met some of her friends, one of them being Alyssa McDowell, which connected me with her mother, Jackie McDowell, and we developed a friendship, and um, uh, in that friendship, I found out that Jackie loved birds, and so she uh, became our bird sitter when we would go out of town, and she uh, was... uh, she was watching our bird, Jerry, um, for Megan, and um, Megan loved this bird, Jerry, um, but when she was watching her, Jerry had landed on her shoulder, and Jackie went outside, and the bird was lost. So Jackie, being devastated, um, insisted on replacing the bird, and so I had the opportunity to go with Jackie McDowell, who was a member at this church, her and her family, and to go to Lodi, because that's where we would pick up the birds. They were super friendly, and um, just, you can handle them. Um, They were interactive, so we went to Lodi. I was able to spend um, a lot of time with her, just chatting, and we picked out the bird and brought it back. Um, um, And then Ty ended up taking the bird on because Megan was grieving too much. Um, Two weeks later, Jackie passed away. So we have this bird, Midna, that Jackie gave us. And the significance of Midna is my friend Jackie had given this bird to us right before she passed away. Um, The other significance of that is that her daughter, Alyssa, and her son, Nolan, ended up moving in with us and living with us, and we now have them in our home, and they are a part of our family, and we love and adore them. So so Midna is this bird, and this bird was so amazing, affectionate. Uh, We would pet her. Um, she She would squawk when we would come in the house demanding attention. And um, she was just a character. Uh, We loved her. So one thing that she would love to do is she would love to land in the kitchen and come and land on my head. And I would walk around, and she would be on top of my head. Well, one day, I was in the kitchen, and I was walking out the slider to barbecue. And Minda decided to land on my head, and out we went. Well, I wasn't great at getting her wings clipped, so panicked. Um, I panicked, and then she flew off, and um, there she went. Now, this was our third bird that we lost, So, and the significance of this bird that Minna had been given to us by Jackie. So I was so sad and devastated over the reality of the mistake I had made. I immediately repented to my son, Ty, whom the bird belonged to, and he forgave me, and we set out to search for her. In the midst of all of this, I heard the Lord saying, I am big enough to cover your mistakes. And I just, I, all I could say to him is, do you know what that means? Like, that means so much to me. I began to pray fervently as I walked about the house wondering what to do. I then heard the Lord say, what if you prayed for the lost like that? I responded, you're right, Lord. I should pray for the lost this way. I didn't feel guilty or condemned, um, but an awareness of how sons and daughters all over the earth who were lost like my bird and needed to be found, I understood the heart of the father longing for his children to come home. I understood the importance of intercession as I felt the Father and the Son interceding for us. I also understood the importance of him seeking us out as we seek and pursue him. So as we went out to search the neighbor, um, the neighborhood to find her, there was an overwhelming concern and sadness, but also hope. Um, we knocked on doors, we checked with neighbors, but to no avail, and it was getting dark at the time, um, so we had to stop looking. We thought it would be a miracle if she survived through the night. Our neighborhood was full of owls and hawks, so it was uh, kind of dis- um, disheartening. Um, 
The next morning, we woke up, and Ty was like, should I stay home from school? Should, should I go look for her? And I said, no, just go to school. Um, we'll figure it out. I was just praying and pondering about what to do. So once he came home from school, and that evening, I just felt this, um, this spiritual anticipation and tension. And I was like, Lord, what are you doing? Like, God was up to something. And um, that evening, Brent and I went out, and when we came back, I found out that my daughter, was Megan, was watering the plants, and she heard Midna squawking in the neighborhood. Um, she followed the sound over two fences and through two backyards into a court where there happened to be Midna high up in a tree. And um, Minna was excited. She was excited. They were, like, rejoicing. Minna came to fly down, and a hawk came and tried to swoop her up and take her away. She took off, the hawk took off, and we were like, oh my goodness, what just happened? So the kids and I went out and spent about an hour or two looking that night, and we didn't find her. But that night, the Lord gave me a dream of Minna on her play structure with a beam of light. And I felt like the Lord was challenging me to believe for her return, um, but the reality of our circumstances seemed impossible. So I heard this, the Lord say, I am the God of miracles and I can do anything and nothing is impossible for me. And the Lord reminded me of the scripture that talks about there isn't a bird that falls from the sky without him knowing it. It, it is not too difficult for me. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm believing you and trusting you. But there still is that wrestling of doubt and fear and concern, right? So I was wrestling with the fact that finding our bird was such a small thing. Part of it was, you know, it's a bird. Um, and I heard the Lord say, if it's important to you, it's important to me. And no matter how big or small, I want to help you find your bird. And I will bring it home. And um, I care about what you care about. And I'm a good father. And I want to give you good gifts. I want to give good gifts to you and to your children. And I want to bring your bird back. And so it was for me an opportunity to step into that promise that God was making for me. So the next day, I dropped off the kids and I went to the upper room. Um, I was still wrestling through the reality of the circumstances, being hopeful for her return, and yet was grieving the loss. And also, just to remind you, the significance of who gave that bird to us. Um, that also brought up all of the grief, you know, that I needed to process over my friend Jackie. Um, so as worship ended at the upper room, there was, a, was this woman that began to share. And she began to talk about how God is the God of miracles and nothing is too difficult for him. And he can do anything. And she even said, I don't even know why I'm saying all this, but I am. And I said, Lord, that is for me. And I claim that and I'm standing on it. And, um, and you are going to do this for me. I believe that. And my hope increased and my faith rose. And as I listened to her share, I said, well, Lord, you did multiply the fish and the loaves. Just then the worship team began to sing about the fish and the loaves being multiplied by the Lord. I was like, okay, you super got my attention. I said, Lord, what will she eat? You know, she's out there in the wilderness. And he, he just showed me a picture of the ravens bringing food to Elijah in the mountains. And I said, oh, Lord, what about the hawks and the owls? And then he took me to Psalms 91 and showed me the legion of angels and how, you know, nothing will harm her. He created everything. He knows where she is and he's going to keep her safe. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. And I was challenged to believe and trust and do my part. So I began to proclaim and declare. Now this is super important. When you get a promise of God, you need to stand on it. You need to proclaim and declare. So every day, every moment that I felt like fearful or not sure, I would just get up and say, yes, God, you are the God of miracles. Nothing is too difficult for you. This is not too small. This is not too big. What you promised you will do. You are not a God who lies. You are faithful and true. And what you say you will do, you will do it. And Lord, you do your part. I'll do mine. And so for the next seven days, of course, we searched high and low, we put up signs, we checked the websites, we prayed, we asked the neighbors, and some of the reactions of the neighbors were funny, like, one of them was like, there's hawks and owls, she's going to get eaten alive, and I'm like, oh my goodness, and it was just opportunity, even with that resistance, to say, no, I'm going to stand on the promises of God, um, 
so um, one day, Ty, in the midst of these seven days, got a vision at youth that he saw the Lord protecting Minda. So there were these signs that continue to give us hope. And a lot, the Lord loves to give us signposts. He loves to give us signs. He loves to speak to us. He loves to um, confirm his promise in his word. He just loves to do that. And if we ask and we ste- step into that, um, he will continue to speak to us. So we also had a, I also had a great talk with Ty. We went on this walk to search for Minna. And one of the questions he had was, was God punishing me? Is he trying to teach me something through this loss? And I'm like, no, no, that's not it. I said, I said, in reality, think about it. You know, the enemy comes to still kill and destroy, but God comes to give life. If he's promising you something, he's going to deliver. And we just have to stand upon his word. And there was such a, a reality for Ty in that. It was like, oh. So on the eighth day, I'm just praying, and I'm re- realizing eight means new beginnings. And I, I just felt as though we were running out of time, and I wasn't sure what else to do or where else to look. So I just prayed, and I asked God, hey, where is she? I, I can't find her. I need you to show me. You said you would do this. I believe it. So where is she? And not even an hour later, I received a text message from Jess Jones with the Craigslist ad with Minna's picture on it. Now, I didn't even know Jess Jones knew that our bird was missing. I I had no idea, but Sarah had told her. And so I was so excited. I grabbed the picture of Minna, and I looked at the picture in the Craigslist, and I'm like, this is her. This is it. It's a match. And so, you know, we called the woman that had the Craigslist, and I couldn't reach her all day long, could not reach her. And I'm like, what's up with this? And I heard the Lord say, you're not going to be able to reach her. Brent's going to reach her because he needs to be a part of the story. And I'm like, what? And sure enough, that night we got, we got in our car to go out and I told him the story and he called her and first call gets this woman on the phone. Her name is Julie. And, um, she is super particular about who she's going to give this bird to, which I appreciate because she already had one person from Modesto try to claim it and three others try to adopt this bird. And I was so grateful when she said, you know, does this bird have a band? And I said, no. And she goes, what do you call the bird? Midna. And she's like, okay. She's responding to that. And I said, um, and she likes to land on your head. And she goes, oh my goodness, that's how I found her. She landed on my head when I went outside. And this was the funniest part. This, she took the bird off her head and put it in this outside bird um, cage that she had for decoration. And her cat was on the inside of the house, holding on to the screen, looking at the bird like, oh, that looks tasty. And I just thought, oh my goodness, this is such a picture for us of how the enemy tries, you know, to attack, but yet there's, there's protection on all sides and, and can't get to her. And so I was like, that is so funny. Um, so we talked to her for a while. She said, I don't have the bird. I wasn't quite sure how to take care of it. My friend has it. You have to wait for two days. And at that moment I thought, you know, this is so, um, we have to wait for the promise. We have to wait for the fulfillment of the promise. We know what's going to happen. It's right there. We can see it. We can hear it, but we have to wait for the promise. And, um, God is so faithful. We were able to go over there and pick up the bird on Friday right before youth. And it was so surreal. And it was so amazing. Um, And I'm just so grateful. I just really believe this story is a sign of what God wants to do. That God is a God of miracles. That he wants to bring hope. And in the midst of uh, COVID, in the midst of feeling isolated and alone, and there's just, I'm sure some people are dealing with depression and hopelessness and feeling friendless. And with all the changes of people moving away and the dynamics of the rock and how there's people coming and going, there's that sense of just feeling alone And I really believe that God wants to say that you are not alone, that he is with you and he is there for you and he's holding your hand and he's walking by you and he wants to speak to you. He wants to encourage you. He is so there for you. He wants to meet your needs. Some of you are struggling financially and you're like, I don't know where it's going to come from. And God is more than enough. He's more than faithful. He will do it. Just ask him and trust him and rest in him and believe him that some of you are just feeling lost even like, how do I navigate through this? Where do I fit in? And some of you are grieving loss 
you know, where people have passed or people have moved away and you are struggling with that feeling of just grieving. And I just want to say that God is the God of comfort. He's the God who heals those of you who are sick. He wants to bring healing. He wants to bring hope for those of you who feel hopeless. And even in the midst of relationship where maybe there's conflict and struggle because of the circumstances that you're going through, God says he is the restorer of all things. And um, you can trust him. You can rely on him. You can lean on him and you can believe in him. And so right now, I just want to pray. Father, I just thank you that you are so faithful. You are a faithful friend. You are a faithful father. That you never leave us alone. That, God, you give hope to the hopeless. And even right now, I break off suicide. I break off trauma. I break off discouragement. I break off fear. I break off just everything that would hinder your love, your intimacy, your affection, your truths from coming in. I break off every lie of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. And I say, God, thank you for being there. Thank you that we can lean on you. Thank you that we can trust you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being more than enough. Thank you for caring about what we care about. Thank you for covering every mistake. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.